Okay, so my name's Simon and we're going to start with a what's called a wet wash. So you can see how I've got my paints and I've got my water and I've got a round headed brush and I'm just going to put the water on there like that. Any shape you like but I'm just doing a little rectangle of water. It's quite wet, okay. And I'm just going to get rid of the the excess water. Now I'm going to go to my lemon yellow on my palette and I'm just going to lay that in there like that. And if you can see what happens is that because it's quite diffuse within the water it starts to sort of move around. Now I'm just going to wash my brush out like that. Then I'm going to go to my cobalt blue which is the very nice deep blue like that and then I'm just going to put the same kind of washes into the top there. And what you'll see is that very gradually the blue and the yellow start to meld or wash into each other. So that's what we call wet in wet. And basically what I'm going to do is leave that to dry. That should give me a landscape. And so once we've done that you can see that the colours are gradually flowing into each other which creates these very beautiful shapes. So this is the first lesson which is using a water-based wash and lemon yellow and then cobalt blue in the skyline. And all we're doing is just letting them wash into each other and that gives the classic watercolour effect. Glaze. So glaze is the opposite of wet in wet and it's basically where we actually put the uh, paint on relatively thickly. So here you can see I've got my lemon yellow and I'm just going to make a couple of glazes like that. There we go. They're very nice glazes. Great, just like that. So that's a glaze. And now we're just going to wait for that to dry. So now my yellow glaze is dry. I've just got a thin solution of cobalt blue and I'm going to put a glaze over the top. And so if I do that, like that, and again on this one, and again on this one, and again on this one. And now my glaze is dry. And as you can see, I've already added a few of these on here. And so I'm just going to put my blue glaze over the top like that. And if I extend the water then I get thinner glazes sitting over the top of the yellow. So going from the bottom we've got a darker blue to a mid amount of water. So going from the bottom we've got a darker amount and then we've got less water and then finally we've got pure water like that. As you can see the glaze sits over the top of the yellow and that gives us these lovely um, watercolour effects. And now I'm going to put a slightly thicker glaze over there like that and like that. And I'm going to water it down like that and put it in the middle. There you go. And you can see that the blue will sit over the top of the yellow and that will in turn give us a greeny shade. And if I just do these alongside like that, you can see that I get that little green shade. Okay, so we're back in our watercolour lesson and what we're going to do now is just finish off by doing a little isometric cube. So this is rather similar to a cube that you might see in a video game. So we're going to draw a 30 degree angle there and then we're going to draw another one there like that. And then we're going to come up with a straight line like that. And then we're going to match those lines there like so and those like that. And you can see it gives us a kind of V shape. And then I'm going to join up this line here and that one there like that. So now we've got our isometric cube using an HB pencil. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the watercolour technique. What we're not trying to do is to colour in 
between the lines, although you can do that if you want to. What we're trying to do here is to show the watercolour technique. So we're not trying to just do painting by numbers where we fill in between the shapes. We're trying to make the paint look expressive on the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to colour in this bit here yellow, but I'm not going to go up to the edges. And here we're going to go for a cobalt blue. And just to add a little bit of extra colour to it, we're going to put some red on the top. So I've got the same paint and um, here we go, I'm going to put my yellow in there like that. And can you see I'm not too bothered about those edges and I've put some more water in there like this and then I'm just flooding it in as we found out earlier on with our wet in wet. And there we've got a lovely yellow side to our uh, cube. And now I'm going straight in, really full on using the cobalt blue and I'm going to dab some more water into it like that to give it a sense of volume. Oh and there's a little tiny bit of yellow there and we just pull that in, beautiful like that. And now I'm going to water it down even more. And can you see I'm still not trying to paint in there. And then find a little line at the top and I'm just going to leave that bit white to give it a sense of volume as if light was falling on it. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, red. You've got two reds. You could use your um, either of those reds. And can you see it's a little bit of cascading in there with the wet in wet. And I really don't mind about that because this is watercolour and not a photograph. So there we go. Just going to do that like that. And then paint that in there. We might just have a little sort of darker bit just here. Just to give it again a bit of sense of volume like that. There we go, and that's our isometric cube using lemon yellow, cobalt blue and poster red.